in addition to using utility functions like we talked about, it's also very useful to be able to graph utility. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. So when we graph utility, we use a standard XY graph. And let's start off by picking a point. See this point right here. This point represents a bundle of goods. So if we're using a bundle that has both X and Y, these could represent anything. X could be apples, Y could be football. It can represent anything, but it's some bundle where I'm getting this much X and this much Y. So in this case, let's call this the bundle 2, 2. We'll say that this is 2X and 2Y. Now, this point represents the bundle that's 2, 2. On this graph, there are lots of other points that represent different bundles of goods. And so when we graph utility, we want some way of telling the difference between the bundle that I have, or the bundle I'm looking at, and other bundles, and deciding which one is better. So in addition to our axioms of choice, we are always going to assume a principle called monotonicity, or we're assuming that more is better and less is worse. I will always prefer a bundle with more things to less things. So if this original bundle is 2, 2, then a bundle that was 2, 3 would have to be better because I gained one more Y and I didn't lose any X. A bundle that was 5, 5 would have to be better. So graphically, this means that everything that's in this quadrant is strictly better than our starting point 2, 2. Because everything in this corner has at least as much x and at least as much y and more of one or the other. Now we ask, now we ask, where would bundles be on this graph that were definitely worse than our starting point of 2, 2? So if this is 2, 2, if more is always better, then that is equivalent to saying that less is always worse. So if I take all the bundles that fit into this corner, or the bundles in the southwest quadrant from the point 2, 2, these bundles all have less x or less y than the bundle that we're starting with, which means everything in this quadrant is going to be worse than 2, 2. These bundles will all be less preferred than 2, 2. So the question that becomes more difficult is the two quadrants that are left. We haven't said anything about the quadrant here or here. It doesn't fit into the category that is strictly better, and it doesn't fit into the category that's strictly worse. So whether or not bundles in these areas are better or worse is going to depend on our utility function. So for the purposes of this example, let's say that our utility is equal to x times y. Now in this case, since I have a bundle of 2, 2, that means that my utility is equal to 2 times 2, or it's equal to 4. So if I want to know what other bundles are also equal to 4, I can just write out the combinations of x and y that would multiply together equal 4. So 1x or 4y would equal 4, or the bundle that I started at, 2 and 2, or 4 times 1. So now if I take my graph and I find these points, I have my starting point of 2, 2. Then if I find the point 1, 4, and the point 4, 1, I get the sense that there is a curve like this that would connect these points. And actually this curve would also mark the other points that are more difficult for us to come up with since they're fractions being multiplied together that would also all be equal to 4. This line that connects all of the points that have 
a utility equal to 4 is called an indifference term. Because we are indifferent between every point on the line, meaning that we're indifferent between the bundles of goods that they contain.